hi hello welcome to this our fourth episode of indie showcase over on roll 20. uh thank you so much everyone for being here today heckin happy to have you today we are playing keepers of the cards a game i dearly dearly love uh i'm very very excited to play it with this crew of folks uh before we go around and say hi hello to everyone and uh get to st jump into our game and this awesome story I'm going to take a second to uh, say hi. Thank you so much for being here. This is done on behalf of Roll20. We will be using Roll20 to do this. And uh, also, at any, it's pretty much all the time, Roll20 is raising funds for Code2040. If you don't know what Code2040 is, uh, it's actually a really awesome organization working to address systematic barriers within the tech industry for Black and Latinx tech in the Black and, sorry, in the technologies industry for Black and Latinx folks. Um, it is important all the time but i'm also going to remind y'all what month it is right now it is in fact black history month so while black my lives matter all the f sorry i'm not allowed to swear all the time <laughs> <laughs> sorry we're like pg-13 here so we're allowed like one swear the whole episode so i'm gonna like oh. not i'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna yeah, that's important good to information <laughs> yeah I because that would have been that. disastrous yeah. <laughs> we get like <laughs> we get like one swear so all the heck in time all the heck in time uh it is also black history month so i want to see everyone listen doing what you can to raise up black voices to to do what you can and code 2040 is actually an amazing organization out there doing work so that is something that we always want to highlight here so yes that was the first thing i had to say thank you all so much for being here now we're gonna go say hi to everyone uh really quickly hi my name is jess <laughs> I am lucky enough to get to produce this show with the along with the wonderful amazing B Zelda. Um we are working to to showcase indie games cuz y'all go out and play more indie games. They're so heckin' good. Um today I am playing Isla uh whose pronouns are they and she. Uh my pronouns are she and they. And um yeah, we are playing a magical girl game. Just as a reminder, anyone could be a magical girl. So <laughs> I, I know some folks have already have a few ideas for their characters. I do not. So let's go ask other people what they're, who they are, <laughs> who they're playing today. Uh, up next is Jammy, whose game this is, by the way, and it's really awesome. You should go check it out. It's over on itch.io. Hi, everybody. Jammy. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Uh, I made this game because I love Card Capture Sakura. I love magical girls, uh, and I want everyone to be able to be a magical girl, uh, regardless of background or anything else. So, uh, with that in mind, today I'm playing Takahiro Santos. Takahiro has shown up in several games. They've been in an I Hunt game, a Hearts of Woolen game, uh, <laughs> to name a few. Uh, but they're going to be here today. Uh, I'm super excited. Takahiro is uh, the sweetest himbo. Uh, he is here for everyone and to support everybody. Uh, they really love sports. They have the biggest crush on Brandon, uh, the popular kid at school, and uh, who's just way too, way too posh for uh, Takahiro. So, um. <laughs> but that's like here, and he's super into sports. He has like a beaten up bat all the time. Uh, so uh, I'm super excited to play Tough Hero and, and somehow involve the bat in the magical girl transformation for him. So <laughs> looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Next up is Drek. Hi, I'm Draconics or Drek for short. Um, I use he, him pronouns and today I'm going to be playing Eden who also uses he, him pronouns. I'm going to be honest. I did not think past my name. <laughs> I mean, I have like, uh, <laughs> Uh, transformation sequence in mind but other than that I that have was no the, that's clue. important part that's <laughs> important part that's it. yeah other than that i have no clue so like i guess i'll figure it out along the way <laughs> perfect perfect i've decided nothing aside from my name so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got this don't worry we have a whole spectrum yes <laughs> next up is cat hi everyone i am cat i use she her pronouns and i will be playing herta Herta also uses she, her pronouns. Herta is the club president of the hiking club and also a theater geek. So she's a little outdoorsy and very theatrical and tries to use that to her advantage when doing magical girl things. Love it. Amazing. 
I feel extra underprepared right now. But listen, this game has really good prompts that really encourages like it'll don't worry. Every time I've played this, we got this. Don't worry. Last but most certainly not least, Vanessa. Vanessa, thank you so much for coming on to play this game with us. It is not a problem. So yes, I'm Vanessa or Pleasantly Twisted. I go by she, her pronouns. I will be playing Lianis, who also goes by she, her pronouns. And unfortunately for Juno and chat, this is also another throwaway character. So I'm still stuck in that loop. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I'm slightly underprepared, but Lianis, whenever I've pulled her out, has always been kind of like tomboyish, headstrong, very, very stubborn and very much on the chaotic good spectrum. So I'm hoping that I can try and find a way to make that into the Sailor Jupiter that she aspires to be. Also, oh Sailor Jupiter I... is best. And um, Black Sailor Jupiter is a cosplay of my future and y'all got to deal with it. Oh God, I can't wait. <laughs> right. Hell yes. Awesome. I'm excited for that. Yes, this is so good. So uh, with all of that in mind, I'm going to take us over to our beautiful, lovely Roll20 layout. Um, and I'm gonna switch the music a little bit. What do I wanna? No one look at or judge what I have named these songs, okay? I'm, I'm <laughs> moving that away. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a wonderful heckin' game that is uh, built off of the, uh, oh gosh, the For the Queen, there's a name for it. For the Queen, yeah. yeah. Um, I just trying to remember, like games built off for the queen have a special name. But... Oh, descended from the queen. Descended okay. from the queen. Thank you. Oh, I actually really like that. I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. very, very cool. Listen, y'all, indie games are great. Check them out. Um, so this game actually plays really nicely, just quick and easy. You can just pull this game out and just jump into it. And we're going to show you exactly like that. So firstly, uh, over here on the left, left part of the map, I've actually put the rules. This is, look at look at the aesthetic. Look at the layout. Look at the jammy. Your games are so lovely and I love them. Beautiful. It's so nice. So it's written down for you and you can go through. It's actually part of the rules that you read the rules together and it sets the tone and it starts the game. Uh, we're going to do that actually though with our cards. So over here, I'm going to go in. I'm going to choose and look for card number one. I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to read the very first card and we're going to go on and on like that, reading the rules. Uh, so you will be learning them along with us and you also get to hear a little bit about this game. So rule number one, gather as friends or would be friends. We take turns reading these instructions out loud. My turn. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. <laughs> I was about to say, who's number two? <laughs> I, I was like, I was like sitting here going like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we are children made of magic and hope. How we came to wield this magic may be different per child, but we all bear the responsibility of it. Oh, okay. It's my turn. There we go. The magician left their mark on our world and through their legacy, they created a powerful deck of cards. Each card house, each card house is a creature of pure magic, potential, and wonder. When we discovered the deck hidden away all these years, it came to life. The creatures escaped and are hidden away in a world that may not believe in ma may or may not believe in magic. This world certainly doesn't believe in children. I'm doing the roll 20 thing, y'all. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we must seek out these creatures, convince them through force, charm, or magic to return to the deck. And if I can't do that with at least a stick that looks like the bird beak, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that in the small print, actually. It's actually right there, so it kind of has to happen. <laughs> you get to do that no matter what. It's in the rules. <laughs> All right. So... There we go. Go through the magician cards or major arcana cards. Choose a card or pick one at random. This magician will establish truths of magic and your world. So make sure everyone is excited about this answer. Sorry, about this. Answer the questions. And then... Uh, go through the creature cards or major arcana cards again and choose one to three cards. This will establish the truths of the magic of the creatures you seek to recapture. 
once again, make sure everyone is happy about the tone of the story thus far. Have each player shuffle the prompt deck or, ta or tarot deck major arcana cards removed thoroughly and place said deck within easy reach of everyone in the group or on roll 20. <laughs> <laughs> After the deck is set within reach for, of everyone, place the final question card or the Wheel of Fortune Major Arcana card somewhere on the bottom third of the deck. The final question asks, will you free the creatures of magic or will you claim this deck of power for yourself? So just a little spoiler, I have separated that card out. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a separate deck so when we are like running low on time i'm gonna make that deck visible oh good okay <clears throat> once all the instructions have been read aloud play begins going clockwise i don't know how that works in this but sure take turns drawing a prompt card and reading the text out loud answer intuitively answer honestly weave your story i would like to ask something really fast though yep. all it's my turn am i understanding this correctly you could play this irl with a tarot deck yes yes absolutely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the first Ooh. the first time i played this uh i played this uh i had not built uh okay so <laughs> i recently put out a video about this because roll 20 has updated their card decks they're actually amazing now i built this layout very quickly because they have updated their card their their card tools and jammy has these beautiful cards so this actually you can build this if you go and buy this game you can build this identical layout um okay. previously it was a little a little harder you had to do every card individually and it took a lot of time it wasn't impossible it just took a lot of time so instead roll 20 has our canada like has actually tarot decks and arcana decks so we just played with that and it was like heck and handy so like literally either way pick and choose it's it's really neat to do both with the pre-built cards and it's also kind of neat to do with with a tarot deck especially if you have a link to a tarot deck it's neat oh okay actually keep my tarot deck at my desk it's a deck of cryptids that's what oh. i was asking because i read oh, and i have tons of decks that's why i'm like Ooh. oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 and this is and each card is really based on the original meaning of each tarot card also yeah yeah because i'm also a tarot reader so awesome, oh awesome. Yay. that's fun <laughs> that. you should geek out about tarot decks later <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah so, so there you go. Some additional like secret fun about this. It's it actually is like I said. It's really neat either way. Play it and then play it again and then play it again and again. Anyways, <laughs> um, other players may ask follow up questions on your turn, but it's up to you whether you answer them. And which brings us to uh, place the X card somewhere where everyone can easily reach it. Uh, so just. Put this, re put this really nicely down below. Uh, if you are using the tarot, you can use the magician as the X card. Uh, if you encounter a card, an answer, or other content that you don't want to be included in the game, tap the X card. The content is removed from the game. Mm -hmm. So in our case, uh, as Jamie just said, in uh if you go all the way to the right of your screen where we are pulling the card decks from from the instructions all the way at the bottom there's a beautiful lovely bright pink x card uh and if anyone you can just draw it out i'm gonna do one now as an example i'm not xing anything just for clarity's sake i have made this card infinite so this card can just be pulled out at any point in time and played um and will be respected and we won't even be able to see who played it so it's 100 percent valid to use the x card whenever you want for any reason because heck yeah safety tools Sorry, we may continue. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> if your card or answer is removed with the X card, simply draw another card. You can X a card you drew yourself. Alternatively, you can pass a prompt or tarot card you drew on your turn to another player asking, what would be your answer? Once the prompt is answered, the turn goes back to the person who originally drew the card.
This process can be repeated until either the question is answered by another player, the question is left unanswered by the entire group, or until someone applies the X card to it. So we continue answering, passing, and X carding prompts until the final question or the Wheel of Fortune card is drawn. Each player should answer that question in turn and narrate an epilogue for their respective characters as the game ends. Whoever last watched a cartoon draws a prompt card first. I remember looking at this before and I was like, I can't remember the last time I watched a cartoon and that makes me sad. Yeah. Doesn't anime count? Of course. Yeah. Because yeah. I watched one yesterday. <laughs> which, which one did you? Um, I mean, if you want to share which one you watched, <laughs> um, that's just for yeah. Me. <laughs> no, um, there's a there's an an anime called which is actually now I think about it, kind of a um, magical girl kind of vibe it has going on. It's called One Direct Priority. Um, Ooh. Yeah, it's like a that. dark. It's like a dark magical Ooh. girl thing. It's, Interesting. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will look that up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I, mean, I will say there are definitely some triggering things in the anime so if you do want to watch just a heads up for that but mm -hmm. yeah we do stand a good content warning and trigger warning mm -hmm. it's yeah. not, thank you, thank it's not hard to do yeah yeah thank you um all right if you are volunteering to go first that's fine so we can I mean, keep the order since it's normally uh cyclical in like a clockwise motion we will keep the order we have had thus far so taking the the order of previously just jammy drac cat Vanessa, uh, we will continue, but starting with Drac. So Drac, if you want to pull, uh, I've now hidden the instruction cards. So now at the top of the pile should be the magician. Yeah, so I should take, I deal with that, right? You're going to take one out and play it in the same place we played the instructions. Oh, okay. Deal. So I deal one card. If you, no, you can just pull right. it out the top. Right. You should be able to just, just pull it. Just pull yeah, it. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, if you hover over it, you should see oh, yeah, like yeah, literally like a card starts to like pop itself yeah, up and you should be able yeah, to draw it out. It. If you deal it, that's fine. It just goes into your hand. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I draw it out. There you go. Um, wow, we pulled an intense one. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I just saw oh, immediately, oh, wow. what does it take to become an oracle? I'm like, <laughs> oh no, my heart. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. The magician was a martyr who made the ultimate sacrifice. They faced death and paid daily for it. In doing so, the magic was changed forever, and we now see far into the mutable and ever-changing future. What does it take to become an oracle? Why is time magic prohibited? Ooh. Oh. How do we feel do about we, this? Yeah, do we want to yeah. X-card this one? Do we want to check out some others first? Or Yeah. I'm just sad because if time magic's prohibited, then where's my haste? <laughs> How I mean, just because it's prohibited you. doesn't mean we don't use it, you know? Oh, like, good mm. point yeah so if that we like could be rule breakers yeah so this is something where we're at the point where it's like is this something we want to play with is this like a world we're interested in do we think we want something a little more like light and carefree or do we want to play with like breaking the I, rules and stuff like that i was gonna say that i can go either direction but for the sake of time and everyone that's new maybe lean towards something more lightweight just because it'll be easier to kind of manipulate and work with Mm -hmm. yeah, Although, if you keep this, I am going to complain about not using haste magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah, so why don't we like, X this one and pull another one instead? Yeah. So I just put it in the discard section, right? Yeah, throw it over to the other side and then draw another one. This one. The magician was a parent before anything else, and their magic was their children. They were wealthy and shared this wealth freely but they did not guard themselves against those who took advantage of them. Who or what are the children of the magician? What do they yearn for? Hmm. How do we feel about this one? I like I, this one. I, like this I would one. say, I actually like this one a lot. <laughs> yeah. We got the instant opposite vibes. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> like from Oracle Death Defying to, you know, Warm parent you know. vibes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is sweet, actually. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. So who or so, what yeah. are the um, children of the magician? Are you asking that to other players, or are you just thinking out loud? A bit of both, because I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> okay. 
okay, so my first thought is I don't know that the magician necessarily has to be a human person. Same Ooh. energy, though. Ooh. Same <laughs> energy, though. <laughs> what if the children of the magician are like little familiars that we all get, and that's how you become a magical girl? Yes. yes. I, I like already that. can see that we're going to do just fine. <laughs> <laughs> because instantaneously, I was like, but do they have to be human children? What if you're like humanoid hybrids what if they're like little fox humanoid creatures mm. or little hedgehog creatures what if it's just your pet and it's like sabrina where the cat talks <laughs> so good so good all the good stuff i agree oh okay what if it doesn't have to be like living at all like it can take any form so like if for all we know it could be like an item for some people mm. it could be a pet for others it could be um, I don't know. If it's an item, does it still have sentience, though? Is it like a sentient book? Is it like a... Yeah. 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 If my bat starts talking, I'm going to be super happy. <laughs> That's going to be... <laughs> or you could just go the complete chaotic route, and it's like, my familiar is actually a gelatinous cube. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I I'm going to have to like, deal with that. <laughs> do, do we want the voice of the familiar to be audible to everyone, or just oh, the oh, person totally they're paired just with? Just, it's totally yeah, just, they just you. Just speak like, to who they're no paired way. with. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well, the okay. first time, oh my god, that's you have big Persona no, 5 energy. You have no <laughs> idea that there's, like, you, you just got this weird talking radio that, like, is talking directly to you. You have, like, ten days of freaking out before you realize it's just your familiar when you accidentally transform because gym class got a little too hard. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yes, I love that. Okay, do other, do other magical girls, can they hear it as well? Like, can they hear your familiar or like item object thing? So maybe under duress? Like yeah. I was going to say, like, maybe only in like specific scenarios. Like, maybe. Yeah. If they have to reach out to another person to like okay. communicate something. Yeah. That makes like, sense. Maybe they can occasionally choose to. Ooh, I like, but the it's, like but it's taboo or like. Or like the familiars Ooh. all innately have like multiple tongues so they can speak anything they want and that's why they can differentiate should i tell this person i should tell them that this is dangerous <laughs> i heard your familiar speak what no you didn't <laughs> no one heard anything <laughs> what you do type of thing um, nice I, nice nice i think the one thing that i want to would want to add is potentially that all of the familiars can hear and understand each other hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, and I make yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. They're gonna that. be talking trash about their magical girls being like, "Did you see the color she picked? Oh, damn, good, <laughs> eh? Did you Stripes, see that that really? mauve? Oh my god, yeah, it looks wonderful, <laughs> sweetie. Oh my gosh, and there's like a click of familiar that's like, "So I've heard about you, child." <laughs> yeah. All the popular kids. Oh, do, no. do the popular Did kids you... all have like very catty familiars? <laughs> yeah. Oh, terrible. Did terrible. you see that yeah. Isla actually set something on fire and burnt her familiar's tail? <gasps> no. Oh no. <laughs> I was like, yes, until the you fam... got to the end. <laughs> right. The familiars are all sitting there at a tea table, just like child <laughs> the ghetto. Mm, they're messy. I can't yeah. believe this. Oh, I God. love that. So yeah. hilarious. Um, <sighs> Okay, but it's still another question that we we answer like yeah. everything but the second question. Yeah. So <laughs> um, what's, what's the answer to the what second question? Yearn, what did they yearn for? Um, Ooh, what do our familiars want? Yeah. Actually, I have a secondary question per the gameplay rules and stuff. So is this how we should be actually engaging it? Or is it supposed to be one person answering? Or can it be like collective and groupy and all that? Yeah. It's whoever drew the card gets final say. It's their card. Drak gets to say yay or nay, like... Drac can say, like, give me ideas, or Drac can say, I got this. Okay. Um, and yeah. once that is said, you can still ask questions, and and then, like, because this is Drac's card, Drac could be like, uh, yeah, or I'm like, we don't, or, or, or Drac can be like, we don't know that yet. We're going to find out. Or, like, okay. you know what I mean? Like, you can really, yeah. like, play it. Okay. Sorry, J like, I'm, uh, <laughs> am I, is this like, <laughs> oh, approximately no, I'm, correct? I'm so happy. You know what? As a, as a game creator, I'm so happy when someone else completely, like, <laughs> it, it, mean, it means the game's working that I yeah. don't have to keep, you know, <laughs> explaining as a designer. So perfect, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. I mean, okay. I do have an idea. And I want to, I know it's my card, but I still want to suggest it to hear yeah. what everyone else thinks about this. But if we are actually going to go with 
the familiars and like the children of the magician being catty maybe the the familiars want to be like the most not most popular but like the strongest of the familiars the best of the familiars the creme de la creme of the familiars yeah a little bit like zatch bell kind of but you're not actually battling the other magical girls yeah exactly what's zatch but i'm not the only one that it's an anime <laughs> or, or another, yeah i think i think that'd be pretty interesting like maybe there's like i was gonna say a point system but they probably i feel like it's a bit too like structured but i feel like there's there's some kind of system that grades whether or not your 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 magical girl or your child of the magician is strong or the best and they're trying to like climb up those ranks yeah so, uh, actually go ahead. i'm gonna i was gonna say i'm gonna steal ideas straight from chat we could do a pokemon style and be like badges and stuff oh magical yeah. girl badges magical girl yes. badges yeah i mean i'm down for that oh my god and then, like they can collect the badges based on the magical girls that they've worked with if they've like gone between different magical girls or if they want to be bound to just the one and they have a magical girl that can do multiple things because they just have a dope magical girl like that mm -hmm. and then like based on the personality of the the creature the children of magic they they can like either like you said like encourage they're like i want to have the best i want to have like no human ever was. <laughs> We're the Pokemon. Oh my god. We we are the Pokemon to these children of the magician. We're Pokemon Sailor Scouts, and I'm okay with it. Oh my god. Perfect, yeah. Perfect. So then, like, like they, like exactly like you said, they can either like be like, no, I like specifically doing one thing me and me and my kid are cool here we're good out here or they can be like no we're gonna be the heck and we're gonna do all this stuff oh god could you imagine if pokemon actually talked to each other like this and was just like oh you're still an electric type mm. Mm. <laughs> that's <Ooh>. interesting <laughs> i love this so much not though. all of us evolve at the same time we're all on yeah. our own journeys <laughs> <laughs> Some Eevees just want to stay Eevees, okay? I know that there's like other, there's a billion types of Eevee, but so like many Eevees. jamming a gym into it and just like, I don't want to change. No. Get out of don't here. Don't want it, dude. Go away. Stop it. <laughs> oh my God. Focus face. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no, are, are we good? Are I we like happy that. with that? Yeah, so the, uh, the children of magician are the familiars or the objects that we all receive. And they're yearning to be, I guess, the best and have the best magical girl or magical girls, I think is what we agreed on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Um, so now why don't we do some creatures? And for the creatures, we could do more than one. Like, technically, you could do more than one magician, too. Um, you could do one to three, I think, is the rules, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. But uh, I think we came up with a pretty <laughs> well thought out, fleshed out magician <laughs> type. So I'd say at this point, let's let's maybe start to pull another creature and then see how we feel if they need. Uh, we'll see if we need to pull like one, two, three. Um, so we'll move yeah. that one over. And then Cat, uh, it's your turn. You get to pull the first creature. All right. The creatures we must recapture are kinds who assist death. Yeah. We oh. I'm sorry. I was laughing at chat because I just saw one of my mods say the most clownish thing. And I, I, I'm i sorry. <laughs> like, oh, he evolved you into a Jolteon. Mm. <laughs> That's... Oh, oh, no. Creatures we must recapture are guides who assist death. What do we think Ooh. about this? I don't know if it yeah. suits what we've done so far. No. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think it does. Like, I like that idea, but yeah. it definitely doesn't suit like the, Yeah. Like, it actually goes have. with the first poll. Like, that yeah. first poll we had, it would have been think, great yeah. with that one. They but, like, together okay. somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think, I think then that's a collective X. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. Pull that one over. Perfect. And then draw another one. Yeah. That's definitely like a story that's worth like exploring at some point. Ooh, I like this. The creatures we must recapture are faster than light and sound. We need Where's the strongest and bravest magic to trap them. Ooh. <laughs> sounds like a competition. Mm -hmm. Sounds like something, perf sound like something perfect for um, 
time magic. If we ever, <laughs> I was say, where's my haste spell? <laughs> I need haste. I need sprint. Hello, <laughs> what are we doing? Oh uh, yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. All right, so I am supposed to come up with like a idea for these creatures. Yeah. Like what they are. What does this? Yeah. What does this sort of make you think and feel? And once again, you can you can. Uh, if you have stuff, you can throw yeah, it out, or you so, can ask other folks. Um, my first idea is maybe that we also loosely define creatures and, like, the creatures that we need to recapture are, like, powerful energies that will level up the magical girl that captures <gasps> them. Oh, for the oh that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. the more creatures you capture, the closer you get to level 100. <laughs> yeah. And I love that. I like this. Yeah, yeah. And the, the really popular kids, strong kids, come back like, oh, I just got these 10 cards today. These 10 <laughs> creatures. Yeah, but <laughs> you have like one of those water types, and I'm just. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, no, I love that. It's like effectively capturing energy cards for Pokemon the trading card game. <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. Awesome. I oh, like I that, that idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I haven't I have another like is this I think it still works really well with this. Um maybe it's these creatures are like attracted to where there is high energy anyway. So like cities, like that's where mm. most of them seem to go to. For whatever reason maybe we know that or maybe we don't i don't know but it seems <clears> to go <throat> to the place where there's a concentration of energy whether that's like and it depends on what type of um, creature we're chasing after because i guess emotional energy is a thing so if there's like a place where there's a lot of people are very happy or a lot of people are very sad there's oh no those kind of creatures jump there if there's a are place there like a sea that has are there, like, cr are there creatures, creatures living mood rings <laughs> maybe yeah oh, <laughs> maybe. i like that and like I think you can also do something with that where you know there's collections of human energy and then there's collections of like planetary energy. So you can mm. have creatures out in the woods at ley lines and things like that that yeah. make it so that you know there are different basically different biomes to capture the creatures in, and that will level you up in a certain like stat or like a certain <laughs> type of magic. Be like spiritual energy, human energy, planetary energy, like manufactured energy, things right. like that. Right. Yeah. If you like capture the energy of a bunch of people stuck on a delayed commuter train, for example. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's just got anger that's all like over dark it. That's like dark energy. Oh, yeah. Right? And you can have different <laughs> kinds of powers based like, on. Like I can, I can smell that train. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. You know, it's just that's you know the train energy, in the morning. No, I like that. Awesome. Are we all good with that? I'm good with it. Kat, are you happy? Yeah, I love that. Okay. Um, how do we feel so about doing one more creep like to get like a little like I think that was good, but like maybe one more, do we think? Yeah, yeah. I think one more would be nice. Okay. Since we're not discarding this because we're using it, do we want to move it somewhere that's gonna be readily visible to everyone? You Say know what? like here. I would say you can just put it over over to the other pile and actually speaking of which i'm gonna delete the other one so we have the magician that's our magician card and then if you want to put uh that one over here we'll have it for reference yeah perfect okay so then i will pull a creature card e. i didn't want to burp into my mic and be <laughs> discussing on stream so i apologize <laughs> it's all good all right so the one i have is Oh, oh, glasses energy. The creatures we must recapture are made of pure energy and movement. With their newfound freedom, they are discovering new forms and shapes. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and kind of be like mildly executive on this because I feel like we already kind of have that energy with the previous card. So they go yeah. hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, if there was a big check card, I would just put <laughs> the check on it. Be like, yeah, we, we were ahead of you, deck, but thank you. <laughs> Deck knew what yeah. we were about. Deck was like, here. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> so yeah, do you want to do a third one just for the sake of getting differentiation? Or do yeah. you want to take this as a yeah. sign? Okay. We totally cool. can, but can I suggest something for this card that it makes me think oh, of? Yeah. 
Yeah. I will put it back. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, no, it's good. Um, so because it says the creatures we must recapture pure energy of movement, which is very similar to the last one, but with their newfound freedom, they are discovering new forms and shapes. What if, like, you know, there was the original, the original creatures of the magician, the original children of the magician, the original items and magic and stuff like that? What if those things have then replicated and made more? So now there's almost like subtypes and like like new kinds that are continuing to like go out based on these like new energies in the world and like oh. new things and stuff like that. So I guess my question to that would then be, are those pure energy at that point? Or are they mm. kind of like a mixture of pure and artificial energy since there's subtypes and everything? I think they could be a mix. Like I mm. think they could be. And I think like for some things, it's a little bit, up in the air like how 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 strong they are how like you know what exactly they do because i think they they do come about from from either the creatures kind of bonding onto something new and then making something new or like um maybe the maybe they've existed for a little while in this world and so they they started to to you know see other creatures see things like growing and expanding and they're like i also want to make more things like i also like you know they've been on maybe they've been on their own a little while and so they were yeah. like me make more now that makes sense yeah <laughs> <laughs> and now, me make more now. what i understand there's got to be conflict with the creatures as you try to capture them right you're convincing them to get captured somehow whether it's strong and brave magic something like that so like maybe the pure energy transforms into like a proto familiar and that's what you Ooh. have to battle yeah Ooh. so it's a little bit like not to make everything about pokemon but a little bit like a rotom oh, I don't oh know yeah that. is that new oh, gen yes. i don't know which yeah one. it's new gen it's new gen <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no it's fair Ooh, i'm looking it up right now <laughs> it's a electric type that can transform into different household appliances oh, and then so it cute. changes yeah. it changes its secondary type based on what appliance it takes the form of it could be a washing machine like or a, a, a fridge <laughs> it's so cute i'm looking at the pictures right now it's really it's a, great it's a much better ditto basically in Aww. my opinion anyway. oh, interesting. <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> so cute and it's an electric ghost pokemon adorable okay yeah <laughs> um, but yes, I agree. I'm cool with that. But but what is like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we want to add that to the creature classifications, so to speak, that there's going to be subsets of creatures. We have our pure energy ones that are based off of natural or artificial energies. And then we have the subset that is made from, for lack of better phrasing, some type of breeding practice in some way, shape or form that mm -hmm. may or may not be pure based on how they came to be. Yeah, well, because yeah. it says on the card they're discovering new forms and shapes. So I think it could be like a mix of, you know, them wanting to explore these new forms and shapes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. If we wanted to play with, like, a theme of, like, old versus new, mm. we'd have it be that, like, you know, the beings that, the, the children of the magician that became our familiars are, like, ancient beings and these are newly developing energies and you know because the magician might have been some like primordial being of some sort that existed before time air quotes before time <laughs> would actually make sense especially if we can't manufacture energy as a creature because humans haven't been around for very long mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. any energies that and any like creatures that we end up producing or attracting would be pretty new even to these primordial ancient um, children of the magician so I could definitely see maybe even those <clears throat> more like all energies end up like taking this new form, but like especially this new like manufactured energy, it seems to be quickly evolving. Like I guess we do with our technology and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that we have enough information for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the next card and the next player. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we so we were we're gonna try one more creature card we decided because it was very similar, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the next one. Oh! 
<laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, how do Are you sure this isn't a Pokemon game? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're being trolled real hard right now. Okay, I can just go get my Rowlet. It's fine. I have a, a, a literal tower of Bulbasaurs next to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I collect them and they go up and like, anyways. Um... <laughs> The creatures we must recapture are small and cute aliens. They want to experience all that our world has to offer. How okay. else are they going to well, have tea time and talk bad about us? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what if these creatures are familiars? Maybe, what if these creatures that we're capturing are like, like I think we mentioned like the proto children of the magician. Maybe they're mm -hmm. like they're meant to like incubate or be in this area for longer before they like fully become mm -hmm. a familiar, but they some of them keep escaping or something like that, or run in a muck and we need to <laughs> <laughs> need to subdue them. I'll be or honest, this like, makes me feel kind of sad. They're like, just out this here to have fun. Stuff. Like, yeah, this like... one have fun and we're here being like, no. <laughs> I mean, that that fun, I, I think the implication would be that that fun potentially could cause harm to people and that that's our our goal is to let them incubate a little bit longer so that they can <laughs> have fun without harming people listen you're cute we respect that you want to have fun but you can't get in the ball <laughs> <laughs> come on pikachu you have to get in the ball i know you don't like it in there. <laughs> chaotic good get in the ball <laughs> get in there we want to live. I'm gonna let you live in the ball. <laughs> in the ball. I feel but like I'll, I'll stop sidetracking. No, you're Sorry. so good. I just I feel like okay. Well, do we want to do though? Like <laughs> instead of balls, it's cards. It's literally like getting yes. the cards. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to because like we're really like in this fun place of like mixing a few things, and like it could be a ball. Like it could be. Could it be? It could be our badges. It could be. Ooh. Yeah, go for it. I would like to capture my familiars and plushies. <gasps> I mean, I mean, I dig it. Not, I'm kind of into it. Yeah. <laughs> and for what it's worth, if I can add something else, yeah. it doesn't mean that all the magical girls have to use yeah. plushies. Yeah, that's a good point. I was yeah. gonna say maybe we all capture in different ways. I do like that too. Yeah. Maybe it's based on how our familiars look and act and oh. stuff like that. Because some of us might have objects, some of us might have pets, so it. Mm -hmm. Or, or it could even play into like how the familiars interact with you too. So like if you capture one in a plushie that absolutely just abhors plushies or is like something that's much more fiery energy and it would set the plushie on fire. It's like, this is a terrible idea. Yeah. And oh, so yes. the synergy is not nearly as good versus Ooh. one that's like an air type, if you were to go off that ideology still or something that's made from like a much more natural occurring energy or like an earth driven energy. And it's like, oh, this is nice. This is soft. And so they actually grow with you better in the plushie i like that actually. i like that a yeah. lot yeah mm -hmm. so you almost have yeah. to tailor your capture device to the spirit you're trying to capture yeah mm -hmm. and that means you definitely have to do research and maybe even like team up with other magical girls who might have come across this creature before you yeah who might have more intel so that like even though it's a competition it also incentivizes you to actually work with other magical mm -hmm. girls i like it how we nice nice I'm 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 good and comfy now. Like we have we have like our world kind of set a little bit. We have our like creatures kind of set a little bit. Do we think we're good and ready to to jump in for our first prompt? I, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay, I'm moving this one over. Jamie, if you want to do us the honor, this worked out perfectly. You get to do the first prompt. <laughs> like, I love this. Yeah. Switch over but to yeah, cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, I'm gonna gonna draw it. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Oh, where did it go? Okay, there it is. Uh, ooh. So you got into a silly fight with one of the other keepers. Why couldn't you admit, this is so true for my character. <clears throat> <laughs> so, <laughs> why couldn't you admit you were wrong? How did you eventually make amends? Um, and so I know that we're still exploring uh, our characters. So I kind of feel like, um, I'm like opening this up to whoever feels like this could be them, but I think what Taka what Takahiro did was uh he was just trying to help. Like uh he was like, Oh, I see that we're trying to capture this creature. And I think the other person did their research, did everything properly, figured out, you know, 
Uh, but when when things didn't quite go right, Takeru was like, I'm just going to come in with my bat and hit it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to put them in my base, one of my baseballs. Um, and and Takeru totally thought they were helping uh, when they should have known better and asked first if, if the other person wanted help. Right? Mm-hmm. So... Um, how old are, oh. are, are we as kids, by the way? Like, I'm trying to, like, that's a, that's a good point. Do we yeah. want them to be teens, younger, or like, yeah, kids? Like, how like, Pokemon, how Card Captor Sakura, how Sailor Moon? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, leaning yeah. towards the more Sailor Moony route and making them teens just because it gives yeah. you a little bit more flexibility to do things that are a little bit higher tier but without mm-hmm. going too far. And then yeah. some of it. It allows for like a lot of the cattiness element that we have in there in place too because i feel True. like pokemon it's like they're still just a bit too young and it's going to be like way more kiddish than we want it to be for like yeah. raising yeah no, that, that makes sense yeah it's like yeah, teens yeah. like what 15 16. right like i'd I rather think? do high school kids than middle mm-hmm. school because you know mm-hmm. yeah 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 totally totally so we can yeah, even I be agree. in different grades in high school like uh, mm-hmm. like high school ages yeah mm-hmm. 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 But yeah, so I, I think that I think that still tracks. So like Takahira is like a really, really tall, like 15 year old, like just towering over the other teachers and like, yes, hi, yes, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, does this does anyone want to jump in? Like thinking that it's their character who was like prepared or was ready, and then Takahiro in an in an effort to just help out a bit too much. Um I want to jump in a little bit because on the same idea of plushies and everything, I would imagine that mine would get into a fight with another keeper over which plushie would be the most efficient for a certain type of creature I wanted to capture. And Liana's would just not do well with being told that she's wrong because she wants to be helpful. She wants to be like a person that can be leaned on for knowledge and everything. But now she's having to be challenged. And also she's taking extra offense to it because this particular plushie she just really liked. And so now she feels like it's a slight against her because someone told her that her plushie is ugly. And so the way that she made amends was she went and tried to figure out if what they were saying was right or wrong. And then they also went around and looked around their house. They dug around for more plushies to see if there's something that might be better fitting and came to the realization that this other person was correct. So she didn't, for what it's worth, she didn't apologize, but she did just flat out say, okay, but you were right. And just left it at that and then started yeah. using the new plushie instead yeah and then that's yeah. kind of the reputation that she starts earning is that oh she's good and she like is really great at capturing things but some just don't don't tell her to her face that her plushies are ugly it goes south every time <laughs> every time just don't yeah yeah and i and i think like what happened like during takuya's like overzealous nature with the bat like he accidentally damaged like one of those plushies you were working on. So as 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 a way to make amends, uh, Takahira like spent weeks fixing the plushie and like has all these bandages oh. on his hands. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> and then they just left it there, like just give you the plushie and then just <laughs> Does the plushie have a band-aid on it? I hope it does. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do okay, that. Okay, this yes. is fine. For, for where, for <laughs> where Takahiro fine. like, you know, hurt them, right? This acknowledge the mistake he made. <laughs> Everything about this is acceptable. Oh god, I love that. It's adorable. <laughs> I love that. I love imagining that Takahiro's hands are just covered in band-aids and then the plushie, like when he gives it back to you, is like patched together as good as possible with one matching bandage. <laughs> Okay, you have to but, understand, uh, yeah, you have to understand playing Animal Crossing, when we found patches, I was like, it's hideous and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so ridiculous looking. Is his eyes <laughs> buttons? I love this neighbor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Paula's just looking at me, my partner's just like... <laughs> learning things about his girlfriend that he didn't know. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna get worse. It's okay. <laughs> It'll get worse. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> You know, I, I really like that. I love that. I think that's really cool. Is everyone happy with that conclusion? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. And that card can move over. And uh, Drac, you get to draw your first prompt. Prompt. Okay. Where is that? There it is. Okay. Yeah. I've actually, as we've been going through the decks, I've been like hiding the other ones. I've been like, boop. Okay. <laughs> so it should be. There we yeah. go. 
Um, there's a new substitute teacher, but you're suspicious about their intentions. How are you proving both right and wrong? Ooh. Mm. Why am I suspicious? Um, I think that they're a mag- I think they're a magical girl. <laughs> I think they're, they're I think they're also a magical girl. Um, I'm like I'm certain of it. So like throughout class, I'm just like giving hints about like. They're trying to slyly mention like magicians. Just re- I think they're like a science teacher, and I'm just taking every opportunity I can to like measure, mention um, these creatures or magicians slyly in conversation. Um, <laughs> so it's just, just randomly like, um, so are you religious? Like, are you like a child of God, a magician, or like just just a child of God? Like, and I just like gauge what their <laughs> their reaction is. I like, keep doing stuff like that, sliding in any hint I can. <laughs> to get a reaction out of them um i love this because it's like so that. anime like that is so anime so you're just gonna be like hand them one you're gonna want to take a look at this <laughs> and see how they respond yeah what was he, what was your major in college yeah <laughs> <laughs> just coming up with a wand does this does this tell you anything does it do anything can for you, you hear anything like <laughs> Yeah, you're just like it, coming up behind them with your familiar to see if they hear yeah. it, like. Or like furiously writing on your paper and just watching them, but not watching what you're writing. You're like etching yeah. at a desk, going. Like, I don't see. Oh he's, not, he's not talking to his like pen or anything. It's not. Maybe it's not the yeah. pen. Maybe the pen. Yeah. So the whole out. point is you're trying to find the familiar, right? Yeah. Like if, if the familiar can reveal themselves, then you'll know. <laughs> exactly. You're like looking. You're looking under the desk for something that looks like a Sealy from Genshin Impact, and you're just like. <laughs> Hmm. I think in the end, how I'm feeling wrong. If anyone, if and I'm open for suggestions, but like I have the idea I have is, um, in the end, I'm proving right and wrong because um, they are an anime fan, and um, so so all these things that I think are like, <laughs> so like they're, they're anime fan and cosplayer. So like they, that's how I'm proving right and wrong. They're not magical girls. They dressed up as magical girls. Yeah, like they just love magical girls. They just love magical girls as genre in anime. And that's how I'm proven right and wrong. If anyone anyone objects. I just love the idea. I love all of this. (laughs) You're like going back and telling one of the other people in class. Did you find out? He just likes anime a lot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Could I suggest that like we discovered it at a convention? Like, yeah, like the top cosplayer. I was gonna who say, wins. I was say, no, it's gonna be like at the lunch table. You're gonna overhear him talking about it and be like, wait, no, wait, what? That you was who that? I saw on stage. <laughs> it was you. So good, so good. Yeah, no, I think that's my answer for that one. I really like that. Perfect. I love it so much. I love that. That's amazing. All right, it's Cat. It's your turn, and I'm just gonna remind everyone. That whenever you have a prompt, whenever you're doing a scene, whenever you're telling a story, whenever you feel it's right, you can tell us about your magical girl transformation. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's all on you to decide when you want to like reveal that, like when that moment is. So I'm just putting that out there in the world. <laughs> oh, God. it's family day at school today. <gasps> How did you turn dis- a disappointment into a triumph? How did the other keepers help you? Hmm. So, uh, one of the fun facts about Herta is that she is trans. And I think probably fairly recently transitioned. So family day at school is very stressful because her parents are not, not like, used to Herta yet. Yeah. So I think what happens is that she, like, for family day, they have a big like production, you know, because the theater department wants to put something together to impress all of the parents. And I think she takes on like a very important role in that. And they kind of, in seeing her on stage like that, have like this moment of, I get it now. Oh, okay, this makes that. sense. I love and it. I think the other keepers probably were. I like the idea that we're all kind of rival friends. <laughs> uh, I mean, it kind of yeah, makes like sense <laughs> for our story. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, like, 
definitely not an Ash and Gary vibe. <laughs> 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 Although I think we do jokingly say smell you later to each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so I think Herta goes and asks everyone if they're willing to like help out with the production on like stage crew and running sound and things like that. So like all of the tech work that makes the the scene in the moment really magical is because her friends are there to help her frivals if you <laughs> will frivals. i won't i won't her, i hate her, her, it her rent no, no that sounds awful that actually sounds very very awful <laughs> You could just make it so that they're always friends and rivals, and then how you address them indicates how you feel towards them at the moment. At so, like, time, yeah. if they have their nicknames, they're currently friends. But if you're yeah. using their real name, they're 100% rivals. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a little bit like a you know, two stat system. And if they roll badly on helping <laughs> you out, they add yeah. one more point to rival. Yeah. I, I, I was, you, you know, actually, stats, when Vanessa was rival. talking about it, I was like trying to translate it to mechanics, and that was the exact mechanic coming <laughs> to my mind. Little like, morality slider. Yeah, like, and if you that. if you roll exactly in the middle, you get friend rival. <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. Oh no, making the game in my head already. I love it so much. <laughs> can I can I ask one thing? Yeah. How much of like the wonderfulness of like the play the the work you did on stage how much of it was actual magic that we all used like our actual magic to oh. do well, i already had it in my brain where i was literally just sitting there like furiously squeezing a plushie to keep the <laughs> lights on i just like this is my job and i'm just like sitting there someone comes over you're hey Giannis, like, can you maybe not right now <laughs> <laughs> you like specifically lay a plushie on top of the spotlight and that plushie controls the spotlight for you <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and I'm like, adorable. And I, I've caught like a, a wind, a, like a wind creature. And I'm like over at the back, like fanning a little bit to get the like, breeze in your hair <laughs> for those really dramatic scene. I think like there's definitely also a wind creature that works as like a amplifier. So you don't have to have mics strapped yeah. to your face. Yeah. I've totally just taken away my fiance's job at the theater by doing <laughs> that. But, you know. We'll, we'll we'll move on. Oh my gosh! Can I say that Takahiro? Like every time there has to be a dramatic, dazzling costume change, they pick up a a baseball with a with the appropriate creature of energy in it and just like hit it towards you. <laughs> and psh, dazzling costume change. Oh <laughs> and oh, yeah. I think probably at the climax of this play is a very good time to have my magical girl transformation. <gasps> yes! yes! Let's see, yeah. let's see, let's see, let's see, woohoo! Okay, so I think there's like a, at first there's a flash of white light. It does the typical Sailor Moon thing where it's just a silhouette and then, you know, all the clothes vanish, but again, silhouette. <laughs> uh, and then in its place, there's like a big poofy skirt that has kind of like a web weaving on it that's like a pinkish color. And then like a bodice that's purple and frilly at the top. And then a little hat that has like multiple layers coming off of the top of it. So it's very tall hat. Um, these all look like mushrooms specifically. I have mushrooms picked out for each part of this outfit. <laughs> You went in, damn, okay. <laughs> um, so the hat is a Barbie pagoda mushroom. The bodice is an amethyst deceiver. And the skirt is a netted rhododus. So when I put amateur mycologist in my bio for this, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So um, um, I'm yeah. looking them up now and they're so pretty what is the last one again oh they're so beautiful the netted rhododus r-h-o-d-o-t-u-s i'm oh, glad okay. i'm not the only one that like immediately was like furiously <laughs> in google just like Keep i up. will try to they're send so Im cute. i can also send images in zoom if you'd this like. color combination is amazing it's so, so cool. it's like a very pink and purple kind of pastel color um and then she like basically delivers this final speech with the aid of all of the magic did the captions really get those names 
Hey, captions Damn. quick, you Dude, captions. Captions. They'll surprise you. Like, yeah. I was able to do an uh, emotep when I was talking about Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, and mm -hmm. it nailed it every time. And I was like, wow, dang. Really? Okay. Hey, good, good, good job, captions. Um, <laughs> so I think that the delivery is aided by all sorts of magic, and it's like a very powerful moment. I don't know that the audience is brought to tears because it's high school theater. Yeah. <laughs> If the audience is brought to tears during high school theater, usually that's a bad sign. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think like at the very least her parents have this moment of like understanding that you see like, and she looks out at the crowd and you know sees them in the crowd because you see everyone when you're up on that stage. Even if they tell you you don't, you see everyone. And they they are actually crying and it's a like it's a moment and then after the play is over she's changed out of her magical girl outfit she's back with her parents and like honey we get it now has I'm anyone sorry. ever has anyone ever talked about how there's no d transformation sequence like they just change out of their magical girl clothes <laughs> normally like, yeah, you just take it like oh let me just get my boots off okay hold on <laughs> right like they're just oh, sitting there fiercely okay well we did our thing we're just gonna go ahead and take five if that's cool i mean there's always changing rooms backstage anyway that's what they're there for <laughs> For Magic Girl specifically, yeah. <laughs> Changing rooms on the battlefield. Oh, good. There's a Johnny on the spot right over there. With his gun, I can change. Yeah, no, there's a lot of mushrooms that have to come off. But I think part of the magic is that they, like, when you, as you take them off, they're replaced by your regular clothes. So you still have to take the clothes off, but your regular clothes pop back <laughs> in. Yeah, from, like, Magic Girl subspace. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and then you, like, as the clothes come off, you absorb the light back into yourself. Ooh. Or into your familiar. Ooh, nice, I think into, nice, the familiar I think into your yeah. familiar. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. So I come back out after the show is over, and I have a whole little thing with my parents, and then I come up to each of you, and I'm like, thank you very much, you guys. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. And the little frog that sits on my shoulder at all times is like... Does, does that frog thing where they lick their eyes? <laughs> it's like, what? With a really oh, serious look on their face. I can see it, too. Yeah. Ralph, not in front of the people. Come on, I told yeah. you. Okay. But yeah, no, really, thank you guys. This wouldn't have happened without you. So, thanks for making it magical. I, mean I do a little wink and finger guns. <laughs> And yeah. Takahiro is like, oh, hug time? <laughs> like, arms out. Liana's like... probably just left. <laughs> <laughs> left at the finger guns. It's just like, mm. <laughs> use good uh, to that Eden, moment. Eden gave, sent back the finger guns, you know, he's all about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Isla went over to hug Takahiro. <laughs> 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 like, oh, hugs over here. <laughs> right. Sweet. <laughs> Um, as per chat, there are absolutely sparkles and twinkly sound effects when she says magical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. I need to get that into my soundboard ready for next time. Next time, stream! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The anime wow sound effect. <laughs> wow, god, I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> um, are you happy with that? I am very happy with that. Alright. That was so cool. Awesome. All right. It's oh, your God. turn, Vanessa. It's your first. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just I saw the word played. I was like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wrote this before. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, your childhood friend is plagued by one of these creatures. What good intentions did the creature have? Okay, so first and foremost, oh. I want to make it clear that the creature that they're plagued by is 100% mine. It's 100% mine. And so this is going to be that moment where Leonis is kind of just sitting there like, Mmm, how, ooh, hmm, hmm. And I'm watching as like this air creature that I have is trying to help another student 
kind of put some life back into the curls in their hair because they curled their hair before they came to school and it started to fall down so they were like oh i can help and they tried to floof it up and now it's doing like the weird anime stand up and it won't <laughs> come back down and they're like trying to bat it away and they're looking at it and they're screaming and going how blasty is this and i'm just leonis is there like <laughs> i'm not claiming that I can't I can't claim that I can't be associated with it. I have I I don't know her. <laughs> I don't know her. And so like the poor the poor creature is trying to furiously fix it where they can, but they're trying to bat get away from being batted down out of the air and it's like a butterfly plush too. And it's going to be like a crochet classic style blue and powder blue one with the pink center just like you saw in your childhood books and it's trying to grab curls but also being bopped in the wings and it's trying to grab another curl so now you have this moment where summer down summer mid-flight there's one in the back that's still just straight up completely just vertical and the whole time Leonis is still just kind of like <laughs> And so she, like, this continues on for probably, like, a good 30 minutes. And then other people come in the hallway trying to help get this familiar out of the way and get this creature away. And eventually, Liana just kind of looks and says, hi, hi. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's mine. <clears throat> that's mine. I'll just... And she just kind of politely grabs it as it's flopping furiously and just puts it back in her side bag and politely looks at the person whose hair is now a complete disheveled mess, like absolutely destroyed, 90 times worse than it was prior. Oh, no. And just kind of looks at them and say, yep. And just politely turns and tries to walk to class like nothing happened. <laughs> As this girl is like furiously screaming at her down the hallway, oh. you have to learn how to control your familiars and blood. And Leon just kind of keeps walking, like <laughs> doo, 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 doo. so. Yeah, it was trying to fix her hair. It was trying to give it a little bit more bounce because she saw that the familiar saw that it was sad that, or she was sad that her hair wasn't as curly as she wanted it to be. Just didn't anticipate that maybe it should control the the wind gust and. Yeah. stuff yeah i love that i love that i was gonna say that like uh isla is probably the the like oblivious person that like when when lianis is like walking by be like i think someone uh, i think they they wanted to talk to you wait come come back wait uh <laughs> did, no okay oh, oh okay all right uh we're doing that now and like also pulls up a book beside <laughs> their face like okay and then like oh. continues to like oh. walk along oh, no. I, I, I think oh. like th this is at school right yeah mm -hmm. okay so i think at a certain point you walk by a classroom and her has just got this awful awful like spidey sense of someone has just deeply embarrassed himself <laughs> <laughs> And just opens the classroom door. Quick, come inside. <laughs> oh, oh! Like I said, just that polite. <laughs> I gonna. It's okay. I'm I get gonna it. Walk in. No, there's nothing. There's nothing to see here. And it's like <laughs> it's like second quarter, not second quarter. Um, second class period or something. And it's like later on, she's the girl who is impacted now. Has her hair like in a nice, well kept ponytail with a little bit of curl and just sees me walking down the hallway and just shoots me straight up lightning bolt eyes. And I'm like. <laughs> I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna like insert myself a little bit and say that I think Eden's the one that helped her with her hair at the end. <laughs> like he had like, he probably had like wristbands and stuff. I was like, it's okay, I'll help you out. And like helped her tie her hair into a ponytail. Um, <laughs> at the end. Oh yeah. Oh my I gosh, even... can Takahira help you out? I'll, I'll, I'll like throw in like a manicure. I'll be like, <gasps> This color will go with the hair tie. <laughs> you know? The entire time, all of this is being addressed. Still, just <laughs> I love it. I love. I love the idea that Eden and uh, Takahiro are convincing this girl that like this looks way. But you should do this look more you look often. Great. This you is look like great. Beautiful, honestly, <laughs> like a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I feel like we've learned a little bit about everyone from this scene. 
Um, I think, I think that's gonna be. I'm gonna stop on my prompt. Okay. I'm gonna stop on my prompt. We're not gonna transform because I don't. That's yeah. just me transforming into a corn cob. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need to go any further than that. Uh, perfect. I like it. All right. So it is my turn. Pull my first prompt. Oop. Oh, interesting. This creature helps out merchants and stores in the area. Oh no, it's that appliance y'all were talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's Rotom. <laughs> y'all were talking about that, that appliance creature. Oh no. Uh, what wonderful new shops pop up. Oh no. Uh, when sad. you capture this creature, what happens to those shops? Um. Oh my goodness. Okay, this creature helps out merchants and stores in the area. What if? What if this is one of those like subgenre of like this is one of those creatures that's like making like subclass creatures? And I can't think of what they've made yet, but I like the idea that they almost started a trend. Like they almost started like everyone they they're making something that like everyone wants now, and so all these shops Ooh. like want to feature this thing in their front window. Like all the shops want to be all like this thing. I'm trying to think of what it could be, like. I mean, I, I'm a hungry person, so I'm just thinking food of so, <laughs> some sort. Maybe it was like a, like a, not fire based, but like heat based kind of creature. And it just, Ooh. it just seemed to know the right temperature all the time to make the best like cupcakes or yeah. um, like bakery goods. Yeah, yeah. Pastries, because pastries are yeah. hard, right? So, yeah. 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 Ooh. Okay, okay. Sorry, I'm like very happy outside of the story because I love baking. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm here infected. It's like, is that Liana's not as Vanessa? Yeah, I, <laughs> I like the idea that the creature is like temperature control, not just heat control. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like when you're when you're rolling out the layers of butter in the dough and you're, you know, creating your lamination to make your typical french pastries it keeps the butter cold so you don't have to wait Perfect. as long yeah so you the, don't have to like rush and yeah mm -hmm. the process to make a croissant is much faster so they're able to do more does this shop make cronuts <laughs> <laughs> yes please oh my gosh i'm gonna order cronuts after this <laughs> i was i'm still out of character i was supposed to make scones today and I'm thinking Whoa. I might still do it afterwards. Ooh. Ooh, do it. I love it. That's Amazing. awesome. Sorry, I'm like, I'm no. way out of character. This <laughs> no, you're whole good, scene. You're good, you're I'm like, good. oh, we're having so much fun with it. Hey, though, I mean, so. maybe, yeah. maybe, um, maybe your character is a, a frequent goer to this shop. Maybe that's how they, um, like you found out about this creature and let us know about it. That would be a very Liana's thing. She probably knows where the best pastry shops are. Yeah. <laughs> I have ideas. I have yeah, ideas. I'm Sorry. Cause, uh, cause it said, cause it said merchants and stores. It said multiple. I really like That's the idea true, yeah. that there's like, there's like a base creature, like y'all said, that like kind of like does like heat and cool, and it almost has like gone like shop to shop, and it's almost like this creature is like blessing these shops with like the perfect, like so each shop makes like a perfect pastry while this creature is staying with them. But then this creature is also working itself so hard that it starts splitting itself into these smaller forms because it wants to keep helping, but the more it does this, the more kind of chaotic it gets. Yeah. Like, so and that's how they capture it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's, that's why, that's why like, there's some problems and like, like, uh, Isla and maybe even other, other, maybe some of y'all's as well get like called out to help. Cause like, this is kind of getting out of hand. Like it's is getting... this a group transformation sequence time. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, like, cause I think <laughs> here's what I'm imagining. <laughs> I'm imagining that like, literally, like I said, cause like this, there was this main creature that goes around and everyone's like, oh, the creature has come and blessed us. Like we had the perfect, like uh, this, this recipe is now perfect. And each shop has like one perfected recipe because of this, but then like, because it keeps trying to help all of them it left like something like cold here and it left something hot there and so like a small fire breaks out in this kitchen and then this kitchen freezes over slightly and yeah. then like you know what i mean so each of us are like we can't like i think like maybe isla is there like first but like isla's like i can't handle like a dozen shops like all by myself like i need help like and like i don't know who they would call up I think like it has to be like a sequence of like you know a sequence of like telephone uh, yeah. telephone tag I mean, at like, which point at which point Liana's just kind of looks at you from the side and says you don't have a creature for telephoning 
Oh, I didn't think of that. This is her giving you the whole side eye. She doesn't I know mean, this. Like, <laughs> she... <laughs> you don't have a creature for telephoning? Really? Really? Interesting. Not... Interesting. And it's she just kind of goes back. She just kind of goes back to her puff pastry and just acts like she didn't see or hear any of this. <laughs> okay. You ain't got no telephone. Got you. Got you. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I I'm imagining. Um, I think I think uh, Isla specifically specialized in in helping uh, one of the kitchens that had a fire in it because I think Isla's main form and main transformation and main stuff is kind of watery and like Isla has a small little. I actually, I'm not saying this because I have one right here. What are oh you no! Talking about? Um, oh, it's got a green screen. It's green. It has a little like, bloop, like a little octopus type like creature with Aww. like so cute. that like almost kind of like bloops around and like does like a bubble beam type thing. <laughs> Adorable. I love that. Um, so I think it's definitely like uh, I'm gonna do their magical transformation now. So I think yes. the the creature like comes out of hiding, like it was like behind them and it comes out and it actually like jumps in the air and makes this like curtain bubble wall in front. And then the, the bubble wall actually almost parts like curtains, like it comes across and it like moves. And they, it's one of those things where like they step out one piece at a time. So you get the <laughs> like the leg reveal with the like, the little like blue yeah. heel and then like it goes up like in the water and the bubbles like kind of come up and they reveal like in the skirt like lifts for a second but they cover themselves because <laughs> <laughs> there's just too many bubbles sometimes <laughs> and then the final like display uh i think they like literally like put out their finger and there's like a pop as one final like bubble like explodes into kind of like a almost like that kind of opalescent rainbow of like almost like a soap bubble <laughs> and then oh, i think they look much more confident after that <laughs> <laughs> whereas they had not been before and from here that they they're able to like put out the fire and they stand confident for a second and then there's a scream off to their side and they're like oh right <laughs> help <laughs> <Can you? laughs> and that's what they you... Yeah, I think Ethan will definitely. I think Ethan will come with for like anywhere where it's getting a bit too chilly, because I think his um like power set is all about heat. He's he's like he's a fire type for sure. Um, so I think um and here's my transformation sequence. I have it all written up and everything. I got notes and everything. Um, <laughs> so um I think his um familiar his child his um like child of the magician is actually not a creature but like an app of sorts it's like uh his it's basically inhabited his phone and i think um the transformation sequence starts off with him pulling out his phone and he like slides um flicks all the way to the last page and it seems blank but he presses it anyway and then as it where he presses a little um flame icon appears and he kind of lets his phone go and his phone like just floats in the air for a moment and then kind of drifts off a few feet in front of him and then just all of a sudden a pillar of flame just rains down on his phone and um as he takes a step forward through the like curtain of flames you see like almost like a light light image step forward as well and you kind of notice that it's basically a mirror image of him but just pure pure luminescence pure light and um seeing that he kind of grins and runs towards this image and it mirrors him running towards him as well and they like collide and just like shards and sparks of light of like collide splash everywhere and you just see um eden now just a light silhouette and the camera like kind of starts at his feet and <laughs> and those like burst into sparks and you see like um black combat boots and the up as he got to his leg those like um reveals a like just like slim jeans and you go a bit higher up and you see that um he's wearing like a short sleeve kind of steampunk kind of um um waist jacket that is mainly red with some black and gold accents around Ooh. um and just got a little a loose tie hanging around his neck and some like fingerless gloves um and this is all like in the background of this is still the pillar of flames <laughs> that's that was happening um and that kind of dies down 
He's too cool see, like, to look back at it, though. Yeah, you, see, you don't look back <laughs> at explosions. You don't look back at pillars of flames either. Um, and behind him, like as the flames die down, you see his phone kind of floating there for a second, and then the flames kind of wrap around it to make a sphere. And out of the sphere, a uh, rod appears, and then a blade appears as it turns into like a flaming scythe, and he just catches it in his hands as um, he slams it down and is ready to help with this far too cold kitchen <laughs> in this bakery. <laughs> and that's my transformation sequence. Oh, it wasn't 37 yeah. minutes long. I'm sorry about that, but <laughs> no, 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 no. That was I loved every single second. I'm just I'm also just excited for the I do have a question. Are the knuckles like do they have the little knuckle holes on the fingerless? Oh buttons? I know what she's talking about Uh yes, yes, I think yeah, for sure. You just like make the, it a little the, bit more the biker better, fingerless you know? gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good, so good. <laughs> Important question. <laughs> But yeah, yeah he's I, like I also... defrosting everywhere, basically. <laughs> I have an idea for a transformation sequence, unless someone wants to jump in. Like, I am mortified of even trying to describe a transformation sequence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna be very upfront about that because I have ideas, but I don't know that I want to implement it in the bakery. You can say for another scene. It doesn't have to happen yeah. now. Yeah, it doesn't have to happen yeah. now. Yeah. I just have to hope that the scene that I want to happen happens. Yeah, we'll keep going. You'll you'll totally you'll, get, you'll get something. <laughs> yeah, totally did. Yeah, and I think um, for Takahiro, there's like so after we cut through and see Eden like handle like with their fire scythe like what's going on in the kitchen. I think we cut to Takahiro who's like trying to eat as many cupcakes as possible. Like I have to <laughs> save them <laughs> so, like, from the fire. And then, oh wait, I should transform. And then so, <laughs> and it's only because the bat is like saying, hey, psst, Takahiro, psst, hey. <laughs> like, uh, and then so Takahiro like pulls out the bat and then starts spinning it. And it's that anime moment where the bat's like spinning around defying gravity uh, in Takahiro's hand. And then he throws it up into the air and it's that Sailor Moon moment where everything turns into like bubbles and colors and Takahiro is a silhouette just giving themselves over to the magic. Uh, and then that's when we see all these flowers start to bloom because they're an earth type. <laughs> <laughs> uh, magical girl. And then so as the flowers bloom and the silhouette uh, goes into shape, uh, that's when uh, we hear Takahiro start to give like a, a speech of some kind. It's like, don't you worry, we're here on the case. <laughs> Leave it Love all it. up to us. And then like, it's that kind of uh, speech that goes on. And then when it completes, the, the bat comes down and Takahiro grabs it and there's this burst of petals and flowers. And then they have an outfit that's very like uh, reminiscent of like, I just want to say like Shonen Jump plus magical girl does that make sense like it's yeah. very mm -hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like there are buckles and there are shorts and there are big shoes but there's like flowers and stuff and like all these pastel colors so. with the baseball theme where they're like pinstripes yes exactly, oh, I love exactly. That. thank you for that suggestion that's perfect do they and have then, a magical so... number oh my gosh yeah that would be <laughs> you don't have to do it right now just because we're talking about like they're very Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I love that idea. That totally makes sense. Uh, but yeah, and then so that's when they realize, okay, I have to, I have to actually get to saving. So they uh, get the bat and then they like tap it on the ground a bit and then they like let out the energy in this huge uh, whap against the ground and then the earth flower energy goes out to like calm down what's going on in this particular kitchen. But yeah, and so that's Takira's <laughs> transformation sequence. I love it. I don't know how transforming would particularly be helpful <laughs> from me. You don't have to. So I, I think yeah. what I'm doing is helping evacuate people. Mm. Because I think that's probably the, a thing that needs to happen when buildings are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> on fire and on ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, makes sense. I love it. Did, so, so then I have to ask though, did uh, Liana's help or were they too busy giving side eye? Oh, she left. 
<laughs> she left a while ago. Because she saw the first transformation and said, y'all are extra. And she just grabbed her puff pastry and her book and just took her plushies and just walked right back to school. Was like, I... I don't know how I can help here, but I know I can leave. And then she did just that. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, sometimes good decision. So I think like, so we all do our thing or don't do our thing. And then <laughs> like, I think there's like a, you know, like a, 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 like, oh, we did it. Everyone looks great. And then there's that like moment of like silence, and then a sign falls to the floor, you know, <laughs> in that like very <laughs> cartoon moment. Um, yeah, I think everything... the neon light tubes definitely explode when it hits the ground. Yeah. Everything <laughs> turned out okay. <laughs> like kind of what? And then yeah, exactly. Um, so that's the wonderful new shop that pops up, and then when you craft, okay, so we ca we captured this creature, and uh, it wasn't the problem. It was just that it was working itself too hard. Um, so when you capture the creature, what happens to these shops? I think. Everyone still has benefit. <laughs> I'm saying this as some of them are in pieces. All of them have still benefited from what they learned from this creature. However, it's going to take some time to repair and get back to where they were. Um, but, you know, I think Isla is like, you know, if you just don't work yourself so hard, maybe you can come back for like small, small visits, small, like, you know, like little, just to help out in like small increments, not too much because you know, sometimes too much is no good for anyone. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. So, you know. Well, the well, burnout, as it were, is <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah, it's that episode with the moral, like, this is what we the learned today. The story. <laughs> burnout is real. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's how it, I think that's kind of how it turned out. <laughs> I love perfect, that. Perfect, perfect. Like, that's a classic case of, so that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. A hundred percent. Okay, so I'll pull a card too. Da, da, da. Let's see. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Let's see. Ooh. Spicy. Oh, oh, what is it? Oh. Uh, so one of the keepers has always offered a truth about yourself that you refuse to accept, but finally changed your mind. <gasps> about yourself. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Does anyone feel like jumping in and like offering a suggestion? Um, I feel like it could be game for like a lot of things. I think the question that I would pose is um, what is the thing that Takahiro is most insecure about? Oh, I think it has to be his crush on Brandon. Like he's just. Oh no! Like, I think it's one of those things where, like, every time Brandon shows up, Tiger here just goes and then walks into a wall and then and then mm -hmm. tries to leave. <laughs> like, and so, like, they've never talked to Brandon. They've never, like, you know, tried. But they're super, super insecure, and and they just really like Brandon. They think Brandon is super cute. <laughs> so maybe instead of a sorry. No, no, I think Track. I think it might be related to what you're about to say. Okay. But like, I have an idea, maybe it's Brandon related. I think maybe someone told Tucker Hero that Brandon's oh I, we can't swear. Um Brandon is a not a nice guy. <laughs> and um like Tucker Hero isn't in it doesn't have a crush on Brandon, but has a crush on the idea of Brandon. And we're we're trying to get um trying to get them to like understand that and just be like, you deserve better. Brandon isn't you shouldn't stoop down. You shouldn't settle for Brandon. He doesn't even seem interested. You find someone who is, who is better, kind of thing. Yeah, no, like, I think um, you know, the the group of us are, you know, encouraging them to, like, Taka, come on. Brandon's a butt. <laughs> <laughs> I really like after like Eden went through that speech like he's a butt. <laughs> <Right? So. laughs> Short and sweet to the point. Sure, that's all you need to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I think Tucker has like such a hard time accepting it. But what finally changed my mind was Brandon was mean to one of you, and like, and I was like, no, like you don't get to talk to my 
rivals that way. <laughs> I was your frenemies, your frenemies. Yeah. Oh, you got to get so and then Tucker's like, it. yes, uh, thank you, uh, frenemies. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> who was he? Who did he talk bad to? Oh, oh my gosh! I think it has to be like if someone is mean to to Isla, like <laughs> Tucker would be like, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Suddenly, Leonis would just rip them a new one. <laughs> like, Leonis is, that does is not 100. Meet anyone. I was gonna say, it could be one of those cases where, like, uh, Herda is telling Taka about how he's a butt, you gotta get past this. And so, Taka just is walking down the hall, deflated and irritated. And that's when you catch him talking meanly and being cruel to Isla. But in the middle of all of that, because he's just being absolutely absurd absolutely out of pocket absolutely just uncalled for liana's comes kicking out of her most recent dance class still in dance routine mode and whips out her magical girl transformation it's like this is not what we're gonna do and so in the process of moving like down the hall because this is a far away thing that's happening to her her magical girl transformation has to be extra because it's liana's she's extra <laughs> And so she actually goes running full sprint and then goes into a handspring, which lands into a cartwheel. It starts out with a kind of twirler that comes off her ankle and makes the perfect arc. And then it's she gets the full screen of leaves that blow past because she's all wind based. And as oh, it's happening, yeah. the wind is actually throwing up the silhouette of her outfit. And she has on one of those like long it's it's the weird ones that they're jackets but they kind of go into the dovetail in the back mm -hmm. yeah but it's yeah. a nice, long nice, one like nice. that and it's a nice deep teal color with a really nice pale minty trim and as it's blowing and manifesting you see that she's actually wearing a fully rose printed leotard that's pure white with all the roses printed all over it and then the top of it is actually corset style and she has on like nice complimenting gray tights with the matching teal booties and then as it's all happening the twirler comes off of her leg and it goes up into her hand while she's twirling and as she extends her arm it becomes a straight sword and it comes straight down at brandon it's like this is actually what we're not gonna do this is not what we're gonna do and that ends her whole sequence and like the girl from before whose hair was all jacked up was like oh that's why you have the wind plushies <laughs> It makes sense now. Oh, oh, I get it. There's like a oh. moment of silence. There's like a moment of silence as you threaten, as you threaten Brandon and then just hold your sword out. And then just that, that like quiet off in the corner like, character moment. Oh, I moment. get it now. Oh. <laughs> Like, I get it. <laughs> I understand. And so she's like standing there, super hardcore, elegant style, and like her rose printed corset leotard thing that I can't think of the name of, but I know there's a formal name for it. And then, like, in her booties and her dovetail, her hair is like all perfectly pinned up and in like the most perfect bun with roses around it. And she's pointing the sword. And that's when Taka's like, oh. It was. It can was I, bad can I, oh, yeah, go you ahead, can go ahead. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just going to say that that's when I lean over and I ask her to, has Yanis always been this pretty? Like, and that's. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I just like teal a lot. <laughs> um, I is, I, I, okay. It, I, I think, I think, uh, is Takahiro okay with being called bro? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> as long as he can be your bro, it makes him super happy. Bro, like, do you have eyes? I, I just, I, wow. And at that moment is when Liana's turns is like, you saw what he did, right? You, you, you saw this. You saw the whole thing. And then she realizes she needs to be gesturing at Brandon and how he's being mean towards Isla and everyone. And then at one moment, Liana's finally just cracks and says, I'm, I'm talking about the jerk, not the, not the transformation. Oh, the jerk. The, right. The jerk. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. That, that. And then that's when Tucker like stands up and says, yeah, you know what? That's everyone's totally right. And then and as she, cool. 
And as she's pointing, because she's lost all her fervor and her extraness, she's one of those people that when she detransforms because her mood soured, it's like that weird noise that you hear when, if you ever played a JRPG, it like usually do a graphic and then everything just falls off and goes back to their normal clothing. It's that moment just being like, you saw this, right? And it just drops back to her school uniform and it's like, This right here. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And I think like Takeru will be like, that's it. You know what, everybody? Um, let's let's go. I, I feel like there's a place where we hang out, like where we have food and burgers or whatever. Probably one of the burnt bakeries. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go to the burnt bakery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the then and then is that the called... rebranding for it? When it yes. rebuilds, it's called the burnt bakery. <laughs> but he's so cute. To. They kept that yeah. on it for or sure. Like, they keep, yeah, they keep part of it burnt, and it's just like they, uh, like something like something pastry news. It's like the burnt bear claw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. So good. Yeah. And then so I think we reconvene. Like Tiger is like uh, has bought everyone a round of pastries. Oh. <laughs> As thanks for helping him get his head out of his butt. No. I love it. I'm just cool, more, cool, cool. I'm very stuck on the burnt bakery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy with that. And it's like, are you the burnt bakery? <laughs> I love it. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that's that's me and my prop. Perfect. It's my okay. turn. Do I get another prompt? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So in the normal version of this game, as the rules stated when we were reading them, the there's a there's a final card. Uh, so it would be shuffled into a certain part of like you would shuffle it kind of at random. So the end would be a surprise when it kind of happens. Um, but it'll probably be coming up for us soon. Just saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this creature breaks up friendships and loves wherever they go. When you captured, when you captured this creature, what truth did your heart whisper to you? <gasps> oh, deep. Damn. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I think it makes sense that this creature was let loose on Valentine's Day. You know, I think it kind of has to. <laughs> um, this creature ran amok and started breaking up friendships and loves on Valentine's Day. Um, and we all set out to capture it. What truth did it tell me, though? Oh, I actually don't know. Can I, I propose a I'm gonna, little detail? I was going to go say, because my... Do your detail because honestly, I was looking at it like I don't know if this meshes well with our story, but your detail may change that. I think it's like the Valentine's Day dance at the school. Yeah. And like part of the sabotage can be messing with DJ equipment. So like all of the slow dance songs get interrupted like midway through the song. I love little, that. Little things that just, you know, kill the romance. Or like it, it goes in a, chick mom, a chipmunk voice, like at the wrong moment. Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. The wow. low key attacks there. Wow. Damn, okay, nice, cool. I guess no one, no one watching I was understands gonna, no, no, no. Actually, no, 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 no. Here we go. Here we go. On the same tangent, on the same tangent, same energy, but then also the creature gives the DJ terrible ideas. So like in the middle of slow songs, they'll just decide to change up the whole vibe. So mm -hmm. like you'll be listening to a slow song and then all of a sudden they want to swap over to like Ying Yang Twins and everyone's oh. like, <laughs> but why? And so now everyone, like the whole room is agitated and it's like trying to foster more of that agitation energy so it can become more powerful. Oh, maybe it's based on agitation energy. Right. Right? And I, I think like the, the peak that I would put in there is the chicken dance. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> no, 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 no. It has to be, it could be the chicken dance or it could be something like the cha-cha slide. The hamster oh. dance. Oh, the oh, oh what does the fox say? Dance. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> all sorts of like really, really memes. Just all the meme songs. <laughs> memes. All the memes. All the memes. Gangnam songs. Style comes on at some point. Really no. meme of you. <laughs> <laughs> and like you can just feel the agitation through the entire stadium just boiling over because everyone's now upset with this DJ not realizing that it's a creature playing like trickster things. Is it a trickster creature? Yeah, I think they're like a trickster creature that just seems to love agitation, agitation. Yeah. like getting people 
who were like good friends, good partners, just annoyed and angry with each other. Um, I'm still stuck on the truth. It, I it got that got whispered in my heart because I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this creature could ever incite. Um, the creature quietly whispers to you, "Pranks really aren't that funny, but I live on them." <laughs> They're just pranks, but I, I like to call them social experiments on YouTube. It it's gets just me. a prank, bro. It's just a prank. Relax, it's bro. Just it's a just prank, a prank, bro. Relax. I hate that there's too many people that came up for that right away. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, no, I don't know. Uh, maybe... Because I think the thing... Well, the thing with my character is Eden is definitely 100% like... I think he's definitely 100% single on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Um... But <sighs> the creature could just keep it 100 with you and say it's completely okay to be single. That's bro. literally what I was yeah, going to say I'm too. thinking as well. I was going to say, like, what if your creature tells you, like... Being with someone is not validation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because, like, you know, like maybe there's that Valentine's right. pressure of, like, you have to date someone. You have to, like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And maybe... I think that works. Maybe the whisper is, like, you're good. Like... How do you like that? Yeah, no, I think he, I think the the creature was like, hey, just relax. Look at all the trouble, all of them are going through. You don't need to go through. <laughs> Look at all You're that good. Hey, you, you, you don't need another person to self actualize. Yeah. yeah. Like, are you, you comfy own... right now? Are you good? Then you're good. You're your own guy. Yeah, no, I like just that. Just go yeah. for it, bro. Best Valentine's Day message. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, despite all the trouble it was causing, Eden learned a lot from that. <laughs> Just for clarification, did everyone show up to the dance in their transformation outfits, though? Mm. Uh, absolutely. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I think Isla's outfit contains, like, a tiara with, like, because they're kind of, like, sea water-based with, like, pearls and stuff in it, which is usually very yeah. out of place. But at the dance, it works, finally! <laughs> <laughs> About time. <laughs> that was like, Liana's probably wore her exact outfit, but then, like, added some white gloves to match. Nice. Her actual bustier, that's the, the word I wanted earlier, her <laughs> bustier and everything. And then she actually, amongst all of that, is still over in the corner just brooding. <laughs> because she looks cute, but she doesn't actually want to be here. She's just here because her frenemy said she should go. And she didn't want to make her frenemies upset. So she's going to stand in the corner and brood. And then when they come <laughs> over, say, but I'm here, though. <laughs> Ethan would have asked, like, hey, I mean, everyone's fighting and, like, arguing about stuff. Do you want to, like, dance when no one's going to, like, disturb us? Do you want to go dance? Wait, that's, who is that towards? Did I miss Leonis. that? Yeah, Lianis. But do you want to... I'm gonna I'm just, she's gonna make up an excuse to be like, sorry, my stomach doesn't feel that great. And she's just gonna rattle no, them off like constantly. Leanna's cool. <laughs> no, pulls cool. Leanna's and just like pieces out. <laughs> she's gonna like, do the okay, thing where cool. she pieces out and then she disappears like that meme. <laughs> that meme, like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Just, if we don't know where Leanna's <laughs> went, she just vanished literally. I think within the frenemy group, we call that a Leanna's goodbye. Oh, yes. yeah, for real. Yes. For real. Hundred <laughs> percent. It would be valid. It would be valid. Love it. This this party is really not fun. Do you want to like pull Leonis goodbye? <laughs> yeah, no. Let's 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 leave. <laughs> awesome. To the burnt I'll bakery. You, I was say I'll meet you at the burnt bakery. It's fine. They're open twenty four hours. Already there when we all get yeah. there. Like, and the thing is, hang on. Think... And she's still there in her outfit that she wore to yeah. the dance. Yeah. She didn't even change. <laughs> I think I think the thing is it doesn't say that we captured this creature. So like after the creature whispered this like very fulfilling truth to me, I'm like, you know what, you're you're pretty cool. I'll just leave you. you do what you want. Anyway, I want to go to the burnt bakery. <laughs> it's like <laughs> she's already there halfway through her croissant with chocolate. Like, how did you get here so fast? Wind based. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh I'm gonna say we're gonna move ahead to pulling the last card now. So I've made it available so you can see I've, I've made a deck that's literally just the final card to make it easy on us rather than shuffling it in. Uh, oh, I see. So Kat, if you want to do us the honors. Will you free the creatures of magic or will you claim this deck of power for yourselves? I mean, 
I thought the whole premise was that we were trying to be the best magical girl. I mean, I can't the be the. Are, that's what the children mm-hmm. of magicians want. Maybe not all magical girls want that. So like. That's true. Yeah. So like that's still up to like us, I suppose. Yeah, I guess the question is, do we have good reason as characters to free these creatures? To free or to keep them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like Liana... Go ahead. Go, I would say Liana's kind of views them all as like her little sub-family. That's mm-hmm. why they're in plushies, because she loves her yeah. plushies. And so she loves her creatures, even if they do ruin Bethany's hair on accident. <laughs> even if they do that. And so... I feel like Liana's would let some go, but the ones that she keeps, she knows deep down in her heart that they would want to stay with her too. What if we discover, because it was part of our magician and part of our cards, that you know what I mean? Like the magician kind of brought these here, but they're all kind of like aliens, whether that's from a different planet or a different plane of existence mm-hmm. even, because they're energy-based creatures yeah. rather than, you know, like carbon-based, I guess, like, anyways, <laughs> uh, rather than getting into the science, uh, what if, what if it is, you know, possible to release some of them to, like, as, as they're prepared, as they're sort of, like, ready and stuff like that, like, can we maybe talk to them about it? Yeah. So, I mean, like, we I'll... have conversations with them when they're ready to, like, they've learned what they can and they're ready to move back to their plane of existence, taking with them the knowledge that they've learned and leaving behind the knowledge that they've imparted sort of thing. Yeah, we I really kind like of that. Develop a cultural exchange. Or like, <gasps> yeah. So nice. a cultural exchange. Yeah. Yeah, was it, don't be don't be the crappy Pokemon trainers who just force their animals to stay there forever. Don't yeah. be that person looking at you, Ash, that's why your Charizard hates you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's legitimate times when they're like ready to go. And sometimes we, you, you know what I mean? Like it's probably can be hard, yeah. but like yeah i think that's something like, we all like grow and learn to do kind of like the, the lilo and stitch kind of take as well like maybe mm-hmm. after they've like grown accustomed to their powers because a lot of them seem to like i think we grew through a card that was just like they just want to learn they just want to experience things they accidentally causing trouble but they mm-hmm. it, the, they just want to have fun and understand things so maybe like once they seem to have understood what was going on how to control their powers how sensitive humans are to their powers they're like okay cool the the baker um creature that was like accidentally burnt everything now that we know that it's learned its lesson to not spread itself too thin you'd be like okay go work with the bakers i know you enjoy doing that we let release them to do that and then maybe some are like i want to go back home so we release them back to their plane or their planet or wherever so i think like release them on a base by like a base by base <laughs> kind of um situation depending on where they are and so what i they guess do. the do they have like corporeal forms when they get back to their planet or universe or whatever? Mm-hmm. Like, are they here as like echoes of what they are in their in their world? Like oh. flat world, isn't it? Like they're fourth dimensional creatures, but appear three dimensional shadows yeah. in our. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I kind of like the idea, like the the magical girl that they felt the most connected to. They they bring an element of that with them when they take on a physical <gasps> mm-hmm. form, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> I guess I really track, I'm, re- I'm reading Power Helm in the chat and it's like, ah, fellow Ash Ketchum hater. I appreciate <laughs> you. Awesome. Does anyone have any other final? Because this is kind of our last chance to like wrap a neat bow on anything here. I'd already said my bit a little bit when I was like, I'll keep some, but yeah. other ones, if they are ready to go, then they can go. But the ones who say we've we've hashed it out, we've talked and they opt to stay. They're not forced to stay just because I think they're really cute or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely have to keep the one that Taka made for me with the bandage on it. That one has to stay. Yeah. (laughs) Valid. I love that. All right. I think that's a good place to end it. Thank you all. Oh my goodness. Thank you all so, so, so heckin' much for this super duper duper fun game we're cutting it a little bit close so i am uh gonna throw it around to each of you we'll go in reverse order this time so we'll start with vanessa vanessa please tell you tell us uh who you are where we can find you what cool stuff you're doing so again i'm vanessa aka pleasantly twisted you've probably seen me perusing the internet somewhere as twisted or pt or auntie in some cases still kind of have like i don't i don't know which cases i'm called auntie or not but sure whatever (laughs) it's fine 
Um, my name is the same across all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, here on Twitch. I am actually going to be live on the front page of Twitch tomorrow for Black History Month from 7 p.m. Oh, nice. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I usually stream from 6.30 to 11.30. Uh, this is going to be the last Wednesday. We're going to be then moving it to Tuesdays and Fridays, 6.30 to 11.30, and then Saturdays from 12 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. You've probably seen me writing for Can I Play That, talking about uh, trigger warnings and accessibility in video games. I review video games. I play lots of long games very thoroughly and lots of hard games very well. So that's what I do over at what we lovingly call the wine cellar. So if you see little wine glasses in chat, those are my kiddos that are hanging out with us this evening. And uh, I'm kind of all over and everywhere. And thank you so much for inviting me to the game, especially considering I know too that I'm notorious for leaving people on red light. <laughs> all the time and then people are like hey did you want to follow up on this Ooh, yeah i do um sorry <laughs> sorry i'm really really glad you came to play with us today so thank you so much for joining us uh next up in reverse order would be cat okay so hello again everyone i'm cat i am a game designer podcaster and as i stated before amateur mycologist <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and just about every other social media at Kat Selesnia. That's S-L-E-S-N-Y-A. Uh, you can find my games at katselesnia.itch.io. I am in the process of working on a game. It's a two-player game that's about being stuck in traffic. <laughs> it's very weird, but I promise it's cool. Uh, I also produce, edit, host and gm and all trans star wars rpg actual play on the chicks with dice podcast which you can find in just about every podcatcher or at our website so says.ca that's s-o-s-e-s -E -S. uh i watch movies without sound or subtitles on a podcast called unsound theories it's very silly and then uh talk about wrestling live on twitch every other friday at 7 p.m eastern at twitch.tv slash so says media. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Drac. Hi, I'm Draconix or Drac for short. Um, I stream all over the place. Um, I probably stream a bit too much. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Draconix. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. The normal spelling of that was taken. So I had to get creative with it. Um, um, you can find me over on Vanna's channel every Tuesday um, at, from 3 p.m. Eastern to 6 p.m. Eastern in a um, Ram the Frost Maiden campaign called From Dust Till Dark. Um, you can find me over on Rule of Law every Wednesday from 9 p.m. Eastern to 12 p.m. Eastern in a, a cyber system campaign called Infinite Horizon, which is a lot of fun. I play a time traveling lizard alien. It's great. I get to be, I get to just be a conspiracy theorist with time travel. It's great. Um, every other Thursday, you can find me on Script the Bard channel I'm from 6 p.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern playing another D&D &D campaign called um, Heroes of Eostera, where I play a wall forged actual, um, where the actual, where the actual self monk. Um, it's definitely a Jojo reference. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, you can also hear my voice every other, um, every three sun, every third Sunday of um, the month in the actual play podcast called Super Idols RPG, which is essentially a magical girl and pop idol kind of campaign mesh together. It's, it's a lot of fun. I play a, a character called Jaden Lot, who's a very soft boy. Honestly, kind of reminds me of Takahiro. So Aww. like, I think they'd get, they'd very much get along. Oh my um, gosh, amazing. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I'm also the co-founder and event organizer of a uh, TTRPG channel called Friends Who Dice. And we are currently organizing a charity event for March. Um, and we did a GM call because we want to do some indie one-shots, kind of similar to this. We want to do indie one-shots throughout the uh, month of March um, as we raise money for charity. So like that's going to be out on my Twitter. I'm probably going to retweet that again. So like if you want to um, sign up, please do. Um, I think that's everything. No, I'm I'm gonna be writing. I'm hopefully gonna be writing an adventure module for a, a game that's gonna be that's currently in Kickstarter called End Times, which is a time traveling kind of apocalypse game. Um, and we need to hit 10k for me to write that adventure module. So please do. I think we're like just over halfway there. So yeah, I'm gonna probably retweet that again as well. And if you have anything to give, please do because I'm very excited. I have ideas, many ideas. <laughs> Um, but that's me. That's everything I do that I can can't, re can't really remember. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, of 
course, the wonderful designer of this game, Jammy. Thank you so much for playing this game with us today. Thank you for making amazing games. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I had so much fun playing with everybody. Uh, so yeah, so I'm Jammy. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. You can find me on Twitter at Temporal Hiccup. Uh, I, that was inspired my partner described Max Payne, the video game series as a temporal hiccup. So that's where it came from. Uh, I'm also a temporal hiccup at itch.io. Uh, so I like to make games. Uh, right now I'm working on some bigger ones like uh, Apocalypse Keys, which is inspired by Hellboy and the BPRD comics and, uh, and films and stuff. Uh, and soon I'll be running Balik Bay and Returning Home, uh, which is a supernatural cyberpunk Filipino folklore uh, TTRPG uh, that's going to be on Asians Represent. So that's going to be starting tomorrow, actually. Uh, I'm super excited about that. And you can also find me on the Gauntlet podcast. I'm one of the co hosts. I like to geek out uh, <laughs> a lot about TTRPGs. Uh, I play our run. So, yeah, but that's basically, I, I think. That's mostly me. I'd love to see you all on Twitter or whatever. I love to. I love indie games and I love what we're doing in the scene and I love the space uh, all as players and GMs. It's super, super great. So yeah, but thank you so much for having me, Jess. And thank you so much for setting this up. Yay. This, it, it was so much fun. Thank you all so much for playing. I really, really enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed the story we got to tell. I like it wasn't at all what I expected. Like we went full like half magical girl, half Pokemon and it was you know, so not something I would have ever guessed, which is why I love like indie games and GM list games that just let you go wild like that. This um, y'all, please, please check out Jammy's wonderful, amazing games because they're all very, very good and very aesthetic. Go just go <laughs> check out their whole itch.io page and you'll understand what I mean. Uh, it's heck and heck and good. But yes, thank you all so much for playing today. Um, this has been another indie showcase. We do this. Uh, every Tuesday here on Roll20's Twitch channel. Uh, it rotate, rotates between myself and the wonderful, amazing B Zelda. Speaking of B Zelda, there might be a hint in the after credits as to what's coming up next week that B is running. It might be uh, kind of not as soft and sweet as this. It might be a little bit more oh, horror and monster based. So Ooh. if you need <laughs> to just pull the switch on going in the opposite direction, uh stick around after we leave to see to see the teaser poster which will be up but yeah i'm jess you can find me at go underscore jg and pretty much all the places online i am a huge huge fan of indie games and you can find me shouting about them pretty much everywhere all the heck in time uh so yeah you can go find me over on twitter you can hang out with me over on twitch where i do a wide variety of video games and tabletop role-playing games uh i'm there at least four or five days a week. I'm here every Tuesday and I will be returning to the wonderful, amazing Salty Sweet Games channel on Wednesdays with some Burn Bright very, very soon, which I'm heckin' and heckin' and excited to do. I make some niche little indie games. If you want to go check my itch.io, you can do that, I guess, if you want. Um, and... You totally should. You totally should <laughs> Just, check them out. Your, game, your games are amazing. Don't tell yourself short. <laughs> They're super great. They're super great. Thank you. And then um, and I actually made a point of making uh, a YouTube video tutorial on how I did this game build and how to make your own indie games into Roll20. So check out my YouTube for that. I might start doing because it was a lot of fun to do, actually. So you might see me doing more how to's uh, uh, to, to get folks playing indie games, play more indie games, uh, build them yourself, put them in Roll20 and then play safely at a distance with your friends, y'all, because it it's a heckin fun thing to do. Uh, but that's it for now. So thank you so much. Please take care of yourselves out there. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. Art your faces and hope to see you all soon for more games. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.